This is Today in St. Louis, focused on you. Right now, breaking news this morning out of downtown St. Louis, a warehouse by the riverfront caught fire early this morning, and you can see the smoke from our camera over City Park there. It is just heavy this morning. I'm Travis Cummings. Thank you so much for joining us. Our Mercedes McKay is live on the scene right now. Mercedes, what are you seeing? Travis, I just got here minutes ago and just take a look behind me. This is still an incredibly active scene. I'm going to step aside now, have our photographer zoom in so you can see just what these crews are battling. The amount of smoke in the area you mentioned, it covers our downtown area. And right now there are about 85 firefighters working this fire. So again, an incredibly active scene here in downtown St. Louis. Five on your side was on the scene a little after 7 a.m. And take a look at this video we got just hours ago. These massive Massive flames were what firefighters were battling after they caught the call just before 6 a.m. This abandoned five story warehouse is on First and O'Fallon Street. Now, for reference, we are just a half a mile away from the dome at the America Center. Since the fire was so massive upon arrival, they pulled defense operations, meaning they didn't commit any resources inside the structure, so no firefighters went inside since the building was starting to collapse. Less than an hour ago, we spoke with Captain Garen Mosby. He says right now they're logistically at a fourth alarm fire. It's pretty much where we are right now with the addition of a few collapses of the building. This is one of those where we surround the structure and basically, I don't want to say surround and drown, but that's essentially what it is. Large amounts of water from the exterior, not committing resources inside. Again, parts of this building did collapse, and I think you can see behind me, Travis, you can see parts of it. Um, this is still a massive fire, obviously still ongoing here. Luckily, no, there was no nearby damage structure to any of the businesses around, so that is good news. But there is going to be a major inconvenience right now. St. Louis firefighters did have to call Ameren as soon as they got to the scene here because of the amount of power lines that are around this area. So Ameren had and did shut off the power here. So a number of nearby businesses, and homes could be affected trying to work on how many exactly are affected right now with this power outage but that's the major inconvenience right now for anyone that's in or around this area now we did have a chance to hear some anecdotes from eyewitnesses who were driving around this area who are actually here for a convention so i'll tell you a little more about what they saw in our next half hour live in downtown st louis mercedes mckay five on your side Okay, some of those old buildings in downtown St. Louis are mostly wood, so they really light up like that. I've covered a few of those in my time here. Now, as far as the nighttime inversion goes, we're we're a little fortunate with the timing of that fire being in the morning since that nighttime inversion has started to shift. So that's why you see that smoke billowing and going up into the sky. If it was nighttime, most likely that smoke would have been down and across the surface and really impacted many neighborhoods there. So sort of a good news situation there. As far as temperatures go outside, it's 39 degrees. It does feel like 31 out there. Winds are out of the east southeast at about 15 miles per hour. So a, a little breeze as well will also help that smoke disperse throughout the rest of our day today in St. Louis. We will make it up into the mid 50s. We're going to have a good mix of sun and clouds outside 54 degrees for a high temperature. Not too bad. Do enjoy the sunshine while we have it out there. As you can see, it is not going to last all day and I'm even tracking some showers for only a few of us coming up in the next 15 minutes. All right, well, right now Interstate 70 is back open after an early morning vehicle crash. It happened around 530 when a car overturned along the right shoulder of the westbound lane near Cary Avenue. There are no reports of any injuries. This morning, members of the St. Louis Board of Aldermen are demanding an apology from Police Chief Robert Tracy. This relates to comments Tracy made about police SUV crashing into a South City gay bar in December. The owners of Bar PM, as well as some aldermen, are calling for mandatory sobriety tests any time a police officer wrecks a department vehicle on the job. The backlash comes from Chief Tracy theorizing on why the story attracted so much attention. If this accident happened down the street and didn't happen to in, at an LGBTQIA plus bar, I don't think anybody would be calling for that. I completely disagree with them. I think any time a city-owned vehicle or a city employee is involved in a vehicle accident, they should be drug tested and sobriety checked. It happens in any other workplace. 
Bar owner Chad Morris faces a misdemeanor charge after the incident and has asked for a jury trial. He'll be back in court in late March. Well, and last month, another St. Louis police vehicle got into a crash that makes it the fourth in two months for the department. It happened in the Carondelet neighborhood just before 630 PM. The crash damaged the front passenger side of the cruise. You're taking a look at it there. Turned another car on its side and damaged a third parked car. A sergeant at the scene said no one was hurt. Well, this morning, Jefferson County police are cracking down on expired license tags. A new enforcement plan licenses. is underway and will last through the end of the month here. According to Captain Brian Taylor, an outdated tag can be a sign the driver hasn't kept their insurance up to date either. The lack of insurance is a huge issue for so many reasons. If it comes to myself being a victim of a vehicle accident with someone with no insurance, we're still hit with that liability on it that we have to pay for it, even though I may not be at fault. But drivers who are pulled over by a Jefferson County Sheriff's deputy may be eligible for an amnesty voucher that would cover some of the fines and court costs for having expired tags. The amnesty program only lasts through the end of the month.